name is Daniel D. Simone. I am the senior author and writing group chair of the American Heart Association scientific statement on the management of infective endocarditis in people who inject drugs. We are seeing a significant rise in infective endocarditis in people who inject drugs. This imposes significant complications in regards to management of patients in the hospital as well as outside of the hospital. And we hope this scientific statement will provide the frontline clinician the necessary tools to help uh, support uh, and provide excellent care to these patients. I'm here today with my co-author and first author, Dr. Larry Bedour, uh, and the two of us will be going through some questions and answers in regards to this statement. Our first question, why was it important to expand upon the American Heart Association's 2015 scientific statement on diagnosis and management of infective endocarditis and focus on injection drug use? Thank you, Dan, and I also thank the American Heart Association for supporting us and uh, allowing us to provide this uh, scientific statement. As you mentioned, in 2015, we did take on a statement to diagnosis and management of infective endocarditis, and in that prior statement, we did uh, briefly cover injection drug use. Uh, but things have dramatically changed in the last few years in re regard to this subset or sub-syndrome of injection drug use associated endocarditis. Uh, the numbers have exploded in many areas of this country and other countries regard to this uh, presentation. Uh, it's a very complex presentation. It takes on many different aspects of medicine and uh, socioeconomic uh, issues that have to be addressed in caring for these patients. Uh, so these are reasons why we're very interested in providing this uh, new statement as we get into the management of these very complex and usually critically ill patients. Um, it's important to note something that we did not uh, appreciate in the 2015 uh, statement, and that is the critical importance of addiction medicine or addiction psychiatry consultation in the management of these patients. The bottom line is that, uh, you know, uh, pr provision of uh, medications uh, to treat opioid use disorder and associated injection drug use is very critical in outcomes for patients with uh, infective endocarditis in the setting of injection drug use. How many cases of infective endocarditis in people who inject drugs are seen in the United States currently? Overall, there's approximately 35 to 50,000 cases of infective endocarditis that occur in the United States annually. Unfortunately, we don't have the exact number uh, as, there, as there is no mandatory reporting of infective endocarditis cases throughout the country. Uh, and furthermore, we do not know the exact number of patients who develop infective endocarditis related to injection drug use. However, we do know that in some medical centers, there's approximately 70 to 80% of endocarditis cases uh, uh, in those with injection drug use. Also in a nationwide cardiothoracic surgery database, over 40% of surgical cases of infective endocarditis occurred in people who inject drugs. These numbers are unfortunately rising. Again, we don't have the exact numbers, but they continue to trend upwards uh, in, in somewhat of an alarming fashion. What are the causes of infective endocarditis in people who inject drugs? There are many different causes of infective endocarditis as a general statement. As we uh, focus on these population of people who inject drugs and have endocarditis, Staphylococcus aureus is a is the primary player. It's the most common uh, pathogen identified among these cases of infective endocarditis. That's, that's an issue as we think about bacterial virulence. What organism could be more virulent than Staphylococcus aureus as we think about infective endocarditis? There are very few others that will uh, uh, equal the virulence of that of uh, Staphylococcus aureus. And so uh, that tells you right there that, that these patients are going to be quite ill. 
usually and uh, uh, require complex care. Um, <clears throat> the other note to be made is that um, the right heart valves, in particular tricuspid valve, can be infected. The left heart valve can be infected, or you can have multivalvular involvement with uh, st not only Staphylococcus aureus, but other bacteria and sometimes even fungi. And this is related to recommendations for six weeks of IV antibiotics to treat Staph aureus endocarditis. It's usually given through a PIC, or what's called a PIC or PIC line. Uh, but is it okay to use a PIC in patients uh, who, people who inject drugs? That's a great question because this comes up almost on a daily basis in the hospital uh, and in patients who inject drugs with endo infective endocarditis. This is often uh, a major uh, uh, point going forward uh, and often has led to unplanned patient discharges, um, disruptions between hospital staff, provider, and patient. Uh, Ultimately, what does the data show? What's out there? There's published reports that some patients who inject drugs can be discharged with a PICC line and receive home antibiotic infusion therapy. Unfortunately, the stigma that all people who inject drugs will use the PICC for drug use remains. The available data that's out there shows low overall rates of line-related adverse events and no significant differences in complications between people who inject drugs versus those who do not inject drugs. Yet Many healthcare providers believe injection drug use is an absolute contraindication for PIC placement. The reality is that each patient's situation is different. They may have personal or social issues or concerns that may prevent them from staying in a skilled nursing facility for six weeks to complete the IV antibiotics or have lack of transportation or funds to complete antibiotics at an infusion center or even at home, uh, as well as the issue of homelessness uh, in the situation where six weeks of antibiotics can be completed uh, intravenously, all efforts should be made uh, towards that effort. However, when that's not possible, then our scientific statement uh, makes suggestions in regards to alternative routes of antibiotic therapy uh, to consider. These include oral antibiotic therapy, as well as long acting injectable antibiotics. Although little published evidence is available, with these alternative therapies and in infective endocarditis, we believe any form of antibiotic is better than no antibiotic at all. My next question for Dr. Bedour is, should all persons who inject drugs with infective endocarditis undergo cardiac valve surgery if it's required? This question comes up quite often. There are known indications for cardiac valve surgery in patients with infective endocarditis, regardless of whether they have injection drug use or not. Uh, these indications are valid for patients who inject drugs. Uh, so that's one comment. Another comment is that ideally, if possible, valve repair would be preferred to valve replacement whenever possible to avoid placement of prosthetic material. Um, the third point is that it's an endocarditis team, which includes multiple specialists in the care of infective endocarditis, uh, should be uh, involved in decision making as we think about surgical treatment of people who inject drugs and have indications for cardiac valve surgery. Dan, let me ask. Are there other infections in people who in, inject drugs of, of concern? Absolutely. There's multiple infectious syndromes that occur in, in uh, people who, infect, who inject drugs who develop infective endocarditis. So in addition to endocarditis, uh, complications include bone and joint infections, notoriously vertebral osteomyelitis, septic arthritis, skin soft tissue infections, particularly abscesses, especially at the site of injection, uh, bloodstream infection, sepsis, viral hepatitis, HIV, uh, as well as sexually transmitted infections, among others. Some of these occur as a complication of infective endocarditis and some in patients without endocarditis. While all these infections are important, the focus of our statement is in regards to infective endocarditis. 
Next question will be, what are the most important points to make about what consumers, their healthcare providers and health systems need to know regarding this statement? Well, Dan, I would say, I would provide this one liner. Business as usual doesn't work for the management of endocarditis among people who inject drugs. We mentioned the critical importance of addiction medicine management. That is key. And we have talked about antibiotic treatment and surgical intervention. These are all very important in the complex care of these patients. Policy makers need to be aware of this and recognize that funding for uh, care support is, is greatly needed and will be required for us to do a better job in managing these patients who are generally younger in age and yet have dismal, uh, more, uh, dismal outlook as far as mortality rates. Dan, I wanted to ask a, a final question. That is, what is most important to point out about future directions or what is next for um, the American Heart Association, infective endocarditis management diagnosis in, in people who inject drugs? Yeah, th it's a great question because this is a rapidly evolving area in infective endocarditis and people who inject drugs. Unfortunately, uh, we are losing the war. Uh, as in the case of drug overdose related deaths uh, continue to rise, over 100,000 deaths last year. Too many young people are dying. Uh, we, in this scientific statement, we've highlighted some ways for the frontline clinician and the patients to start winning this war. The focus on addiction medicine and harm prevention is key so that we can change the dynamics of the current infective endocarditis epidemic. Ultimately, based on the human and financial costs that continue to occur, governmental, healthcare systems, political involvement is needed to reverse the current trend in effective endocarditis among people who inject drugs. With this in mind, we are planning uh, likely an, our, an update to this statement in the next couple of years, just given uh, how, how rapidly evolving this area is. And as we learn more, uh, and hopefully the scientific statement can have an impact uh, uh, on patient care and outcomes. I'd like to pass on to Dr. Bedor for some closing words. You've made all the critical point, points, and uh, I, I thank you. Also, again, would like to thank the American Heart Association for appreciating the need for this statement. It's critical that we provide this information in an exploding epidemic of not only opioid and drug use, but also in the endocarditis epidemic that is being seen in many areas of this country and other countries regarding um, the syndrome of infective endocarditis in people who inject drugs. Thank you again.